Hello, today I'm going to walk you through creating um, a Microblaze soft microcontroller core on a Xilinx Spartan 7 FPGA. Uh, the tools I'm using today, I'm using Vivado 2020.1, which has uh, just been released, and I'm using a, a Digilent CMOD S7 board. But um, the techniques here should be the same for um, any Spartan 7 and also for the most recent versions of Vivado. Um, versions earlier than 2019.1 have a slightly different way of handing off the hardware to the software side of things. So I'll start by creating a project. Um, it's going to, I call it MB Demo, uh, standard RTL project, and I'm going to pick CMOD S7 as my board. There you go. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, even though we don't need it till a little bit later, is I'm actually going to um, add a constraints file. Now a constraints file, if you're not aware, is um, tells Vivado where all the pins are and what they're connected to. So if I create this file and I'm going to copy and paste in the contents of the constraints file that's provided by Digilet themselves. Um, you notice at the moment everything is commented out, so this file actually does nothing at the moment, but um, I've got it in there anyway. Um, I'm hoping, I picked a fairly low screen resolution, hoping there's a good compromise of uh, being able to view it on video. Um, so now we've got our constraints file, we're going to create a block design. Can leave it with the default name of design one. Now this is where we create our micro blaze soft core. So I'll add the button here. That's right. I'll maximize it a bit. I'll add the microblaze. Now I'm going to start by showing you how to use a microblaze MCS, which is a bit simpler, and I will come back to the microblaze later. So I'm going to add the microblaze component. I'm going to open it up and customize it a little bit. So the benefit of having your own so, uh, defined microcontroller, defined and programming hardware is that you uh, you can change it. So on the board here, I'm going to decide I'll have a UART connected to USB. Um, I'm going to enable debug support. And for GPO, so general purpose output, I'm just going to have four bits of GPO in my example. Obviously, there's plenty more examples. You, have, you can have input, you can have timers, you have interrupts. Um, there's plenty more you can basically make this microcontroller do various things um, depending on what what you need it for. So I'm going to expand the GPO and I'm going to make these three ports here external. No, nope, that all seems to happen. I'm going to put the whole thing. I'm just going to make there we go. I'm going to make just those four outputs external. I'm going to give it a nicer name. And I'm going to call them, sorry, it's hard working with this low resolution screen. I'm going to call them LED. The name is important because that has to match up to the constraints file later. <coughs> um, normally you would click run connection automation here. Um, and I've discovered a little bit of a problem here in that um, by default it uses the 12 megahertz clock here that's provided by the board and that doesn't seem to work well when you then try and run the program. So uh, I'm going to add a clocking wizard um, and wire the clock output into the microblaze. This takes the 12 megahertz clock in and provides a 100 megahertz clock which seems to suit the microblaze a lot better. Um, and now uh, I think I'm ready to run my connection automation. There we go. So this connection automation is really handy. It basically does all the boring stuff and connects everything up for you. So it will wire up the reset and clock in. It will connect up the UART going out. Uh, very useful. Um, and there we go. Now we have our design. So it's taken the 12 megahertz clock here, provide 100 megahertz out. It's also noticed that the reset is active low, but the microblaze is active high. So it just inverts it here as well. So now we have our design, let's validate it, make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, that looks good. 
And now we need to, um, this block design needs to be wrapped in uh, hardware definition language. So it needs to have a, um, it needs to have a, what a program would call like a main function wrapping around it. Uh, we don't really have that, um, but uh, it's kind of the equivalent when you're dealing with hardware. So obviously it's possible we may, may have more than one block design. So if you have a look at this design wrapper, you'll see it's just some Verilog that basically says these are the externals for our project. And inside there's really a design one implementation that's connected up. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that at the moment. Um, once we have created our HDL wrapper, um, we could then generate to, to um, <coughs> we could run simulation synthesis implementation um, and connect it up, but it's actually going to fail at the moment because it doesn't know where we want to connect these LED 3A, the four LED pins to. So if we now go to our constraints bar, here we are. So uncomment these four lines. These are called LED 0 to LED 3. The names are important. They really need to tie in with what's in the diagram. So now knows not where to collect, connect those four. Before I um, run all the synthesis, I'm just going to show you what's inside the microblaze. So inside this block here, the microblaze MCS is a microblaze core. It's got a system reset. It's got a debugger. It's got various blocks used for providing RAM and it's got some output. So uh, you can actually dig in to this design. Um, it's not all closed. So now we're going to generate the bitstream. Now uh, this can be a bit slow, even on a reasonable PC, this can take five minutes. So I'm going to click generate bitstream here and uh, I'll probably um, not make you wait. Uh, I'll probably um, cut this bit out. Okay, so I saved you five minutes, not having to wait and watch that uh, synthesis. Um, it's all surprised me that considering how blazingly fast FPGAs are, the uh, the synthesis or the equivalent of compilation takes a long time, even on some very impressive hardware. Um, so now we've got our design compiled down to a bitstream. Uh, we need to export this. So we've got um, our hardware defined for our software side of things to use it. So I'm going to export as a fixed platform. I'm going to include the bitstream, otherwise you won't have our microblaze. Um, I'm going to leave it as design wrapper one. And fish. And this creates um, here, this creates this XSA file, which is basically the definition of everything we need for our hardware. So this is what, uh, if you had separate teams, what the hardware guys would hand over to the software guys to start writing software for. So now I'm going to launch our IDE. Um, if you ever use an Eclipse-based ID for programming like controls, you'll find this looks very familiar. Um, I'm going to create a Vitus folder underneath our MB demo um, as our new workspace and open that up. So this is really where we start using the microcontroller that we've actually created ourselves. So I'm going to create an application project. Um, I'm going to create a new platform from, from the hardware. So we'll pick the the um, the file that we have created. MV demo. This is it. Design wrapper XSA. And this is really everything that we need to tell the ID what we're using. So I'm going to create an application. Um, I'll call that also MV demo. Um, and you'll see here we're going to do a standalone. Microdriver. You can see you also do free RTOS and uh, perhaps on, uh, on the larger ones you can do a, a Linux uh, implementation as well. So basically everything you can do with a normal microcontroller. Uh, I'm going to pick a hello world for now. Nice easy way to make sure we've actually got everything correct and working. <coughs> so it takes a little while to get everything set up. Expand this so our source code hello world.c um, is really just writing out hello world to the uh, the USB UART. So if I compile this, now 
Now, if I try to debug it, it will say it doesn't really know how to debug it. So, if I click debug now, no recent launches. So, if we're going to debug it and define a debug configuration, we need single application debug and we need a new instance debugger. Okay, if we now click debug, it will <coughs> compile our code and run it within the microcontroller that we have defined. So program the FPGA, and now it's actually copying the code across into some other RAM. So what I'm going to do is I'll pause just here, and I'm going to bring up a serial terminal. Um, I know I'm on COM34, and very ancient 9600, so now we've got a terminal here. Any um, terminal program would do. So now if we step through this, you'll see Hello World. So initially nothing impressive, but uh, if we consider the fact that this is running on a microcontroller that we've also created, so it's not just the code, it's actually the, the hardware that we've defined. Um, I'm going to copy in a slightly more interesting program of Hello World, although to be honest, not a lot more. This is a very simple blinky. Uh, it uses, initializes the GPO, and then it just writes out to this GPIO, uh, GPIO1. It writes out uh, an incrementing value, so we should get a nice little uh, binary pattern coming out there. Um, so not much more than hello world, really. It is, this is blinky. So if we now compile this again, and we will see that when it now runs, instead of hello world, we'll get LED test, and then we'll get a blinky pattern up here. Right, what's going on there? Okay, so the demo. Okay, so if now if we run through this as before, you'll now see our terminal said LED test, and uh, we now have a blinky pattern on there. So there we go. We have a, a microblaze running some code. Um, so the big question is why? So we've now turned our expensive FPGA into a very cheap microcontroller. Well, the answer really comes if you go back to <coughs> excuse me back to Vivado. So this is our design here, our single microblaze. But um, if you look at the implementation here, I click on report utilization, you'll see exactly how much of our FPA, FPGA we've used. And the answer really is not a lot. Okay, let's open up this report. So you can see here in this diagram, you, see, you can actually see where it's used parts of the FPGA and there's, there's not a huge amount used there. So if I go to summary, we'll even see a nice percentage. So we use six percent of the lookup tables, around five or six percent of most things. Uh, a bit more of the clocking, but we don't really need much in the way of clocks. So all this space here is room for whatever you want. So this can be stuff that runs well on FPGAs, um, stuff like um, video processing, that sort of thing. Stuff that microcontrollers don't do well. Or just for this example, I'm going to actually use this and just I'm going to just fill it up with more microcontrollers. Why stop at one? So if I go back to our block design, here we are. So there's loads of this empty space. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just go, well, if I could type, I'm going to add another microblaze MCS. Um, I'm going to wire this clock up to the clocking wizard, otherwise it will probably connect it up to uh, this one here and run the connection automation. And here we have another micro blaze that will actually run quite independently of the other one. Um, there's, there's two completely independent cores. Um, let me see if I can shuffle the design around a bit more, put it over here. Um, yep, so two micro blazes. I said before I'd show you the micro blaze itself rather than the micro blaze MCS, so I'll do that now. So let's just put in another 
MicroBlaze, not the MicroBlaze MCS, just a MicroBlaze on its own. Um, and once again, let's put it up here somewhere. I'll run automation and it will connect. So once again, it's very similar. You can say how much memory you want and so on. But this time, rather than it being all within the MicroBlaze MCS, you can see it as I design it's added the debugger. It's a, a process system reset. This here is uh, all the memory for the MicroBlaze. So it's laid out slightly differently, but essentially the same thing. Um, the difference is come if I do things like if I add a UART, which I'm going to connect to my MicroBlaze. Um, let's put that over here. Um, how do I stop at one? Um, you know, this is this is my hardware. I can do what I like. So uh, I'm going to add a second one. And uh, ah, what the hell? I had a third one. I'm going to add. I just want UARTs everywhere. So I put these over here. And now if I run connection automation again, and connect all these up for me, please, then you'll see that um, these are all connected up via, uh, this is uh, an Axie interconnect. So it takes the Axie master from the microblaze and splits it out to the three here. And now I have three microblazes. This one has its own UART, this one has three. Uh, if I ran this now, I think it would complain that I've now got four which are all connected up to USB and it would fail. But um, other than that, if I connected these via the um, constraints file, connected these up to the pins and the FPGA, I could have uh, loads of external UARTs. So um, once again, this really shows what you can do with an FPGA. You're not limited to one little microcontroller. Um, it's probably a bit of a waste to be honest, having three microcontrollers in there. But uh, you, anything you like, um, especially you know all this lovely IP that's been defined uh, by Xilinx for you. Um, here's things like a streaming video, um, en endless. Yeah, I, I squared S if you uh, for audio. Um, loads of useful stuff, and also you can all you can create these yourself as well. So to be honest, there's the benefit of doing a microblaze in an FPJ is that it doesn't have to be just a microblaze. Um, also at the moment ARM do their Cortex M0 and M3 cores are available as soft cores so you could put one or two of those in there as well. Um, a little bit harder than MicroBlaze but uh, but not a great deal. Um, so really it's the flexibility of the FPGA that uh, makes it so powerful. Well I hope that's been an interesting view onto uh, micro, soft microcontrollers on FPGAs. Um, thank you.